And if tov everybody, good evening to our third installment of our series on the book of Mishle. Bezrat Hashem, tonight we will finally begin some of the proverbs and the parables that Shlomo HaMelech teaches us in this sefer, all in an effort to seek wisdom, to seek musar, discipline, and all the wonderful things that he wishes to hand over to us uh, that is found in this extremely holy sefer of Mishle. We are on, for those following us, we are on Perik Aleph, uh, Pasuk Zayn. Today we're going to learn three Pesukim, Zayn, Chet, and Tet. And uh, this is the start of the actual Proverbs. Until now, it was really just an introduction. And um, now we get to see a little, get a little taste of what is in store for us throughout this sefer. His first proverb, or the first statement of Mashal, that Shlomo HaMelech wishes to impart to us, states, Pasuk Zayn, Yirat Hashem Reshit Da'at, Chochma Umusar Evilim Bazu. Translated, fear of Hashem, Yirat Hashem, fear of God, is the beginning of knowledge. Chochma Umusar Evilim Bazu. But, the skeptics scorn, bazu, they scorn wisdom and discipline. So again, the first part of the Sefer is going to, is going to teach us the ability to attain chokhmah, wisdom and knowledge. And he's telling us here that fear of Hashem, Yirat Hashem, is the beginning of knowledge. It is the primary choice component of knowledge. And it's a prerequisite of anything. Chokhmah needs to be predicated on the fear of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because that generates our desire to be engrossed uh, in Chokhmah. Uh, you have to think of fear, as of Yiram, as a foundation to a building. If there's any weakness in the building's foundation, the slightest stress will place the entire structure in danger of collapse. So too, if a person's fear of God is weak, vizirat shamayim is weak, and even in the slightest doubt, then it will confuse him. It will cause his faith, his faith, his emunah to falter. And as a result, maybe chas shalom, his entire belief system will be stained, let alone can't be able to reach any form of chokhmah. The Malbim writes that in every area of wisdom, Human wisdom, human intellect, is based on fundamentals. Science, for example, is based on experimentation, observation, testing out things, and uh, hypotheses, so on and so forth. The wisdom referred to in the book of Mishle is the chokhmah of Torah, is the wisdom of Torah, and, and, good, and good character traits. It's all embedded in one, as we said in the previous year. And therefore, the fundamentals are not easily accessible. It's not just, oh, let me see and try out. The wisdom needs to be received from its source. What is the source? Hashem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So it's, it's truly impossible to acquire this wisdom, not scientific wisdom or engineering wisdom or artistic wisdom, but wisdom of the Torah cannot happen without fear of God. Yirat Hashem. Fear Hashem, the believing in Him, is, uh, it includes, of course, the unquestioning acceptance of His presence and the fact that He's Mashkiach on the entire world. And, of course, the fulfillment of the mitzvot. The Chachamim explain that this statement is the motive for proper conduct and behavior um, and is actually the main uh, slogan for the book of Mishle. And because of that, it's actually found twice in this book. In this pasuk, which says, Yirat Hashem Rashid Da'at Chokhmah Musar Evelin Bazu. And later on, in Perek Tet, at the end of the discourse, in the ninth chapter, at the end of the discussion of attaining Chokhmah, if you were to open over there, you would see that the pasuk says very similarly, Techilat Chokhmah Yirat Hashem. The beginning of wisdom is fear of God. 
so we see how how it opens and closes with this idea. It's kind of like the motto of of Mishle. You want to attain wisdom, it has to start with Yirat Shamayim. People that don't have Yirat Shamayim, this book's not for them. You have to stop right now. You're, you won't be successful in any part whatsoever without at least attaining or have a little within you of Yirat Shamayim. Chokma umusar evilim bazu. Skeptics scorn the wisdom. They scorn the, dis- the, the discipline. So skeptics are the people who don't fear God. They're the people that um, scorn the Chokhmah and the Musar. The, the Malbim writes that the word Evil, which is the, we translate it as, as skeptics in this Pasuk, Evilim, that they lack fear of God, is, the Malbim says it comes from the word Ulai. Ulai in Hebrew means maybe, doubt denotes doubt. And therefore, these people uh, the, uh, are, are doubters. They're skeptical, they're skeptical about the wisdom and fear of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It doesn't allow them to accept any teaching of wisdom or any teaching of Musar. Because those teachings of wisdom and Musar are, are, are predicated on the, on the recognition of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Uh, that, that, and, he's there, and, and the fear of Him. Without that, if it, then then what are you what are you gonna get? Of course, like we said, like we said at the beginning, you got nothing. So these people that are skeptics don't are not interested in attaining wisdom because they lack the fear of God. Skeptics scorn the chokhmah and the musar because they don't fear Akados Baruch Hu. and as a result, the chokhmah and musar have no value to them. It works both way around. They say, well, why do I need chokhmah? Why need musar? Why well, need someone to tell me what I'm doing or what I'm doing wrong? I don't need anyone to discipline uh, me because these people are skeptical of the fact that there is a, a higher wisdom to attain. Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa explains in Pirkei Avot, the third chapter, uh, Mishnah Yud Aleph, he says, Kol kodemet lechokmato, chokmato mitkayemet. Anyone whose fear of sin takes priority to his chokmah, his chokmah will endure. But anyone whose chokhmah precedes the fear of sin, then that chokhmah is not going to endure. So that's that's the statement of Bihani Ben Dosa, with his echoing what we said over here. In order to attain chokhmah, you need to have fear of sin. There was a story uh, about the, Rav, the Noam Elimelech, Rav Elimelech of Lezhinsk, who was once castigating himself in the in the harshest manner possible. He was referring to himself as a horrible uh, sinner. And the, his disciples were watching him say this about himself and they couldn't understand. They said, Rebbe, how can you say such terrible things about yourself? You know they're not, you know they're not true. So how can you say that? So Beli Melech answered with a, by means of a mashal. Because there was once a king who wished to redesign his palace and all the chambers of his palace. And one of the laborers who was working at the construction of the new palace he had a grudge against the king. He was upset. He raised the taxes or whatever, whatnot. So he intentionally dug the foundation 10 meters off course. And when they found out that he did this, he was whipped. They gave him a, a smack and he made him fill up the ditch because he made a mistake. Then, says Rav Eli Melech, there was a jeweler. And the jeweler was assigned the task of preparing the diamond that was going to be the centerpiece of the crown that the king was going to wear. But he was negligent. And he deviated one fraction of a millimeter in cutting the diamond. And the beauty of the gem was ruined. And he was given a lengthy prison sentence as a result of this negligence. Rav Elimelech asks his students, he says, how is it that the jeweler, whose error was just a fraction of a millimeter, was which was nothing in compared to how the, the big mistake that the uh, the uh, the laborer did, and he, the jeweler, is sent into prison for years as a result for doing that, for his negligence. The other guy made such a harsh mistake. What he gave? He gave a few palisas, a few smacks, and he made him dig it up, and that's it. He can move on with the rest of his life. So he explained the following. He says, because a person who works with the crown jewels a person who works with things that are so precious has a far greater responsibility than a person who just digs a foundation. The minus devi- the, 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 the the smallest deviation of something so precious is considered a serious offense. 
So Beli Melech told the students, for a person of limited resources, spiritual resource, ah, you know, I'm at it, a regular balabite, a guy that doesn't, you know, doesn't have high expectations. So, yeah, a sin is a big violation. Said there, fine, give him a little smack, done, and you can move on with the rest of your life. But a person whose spirituality is at the highest of order and the expectations are so much greater for him, any small mistake is considered a serious offense. So he said about himself, with all the amazing teachers I had and all the knowledge that I gained, he, I am falling short of my, uh, of my mark. And, uh, you know, it was one, it was said, continuing on longer, Noam Elimelech, they said that about, he said about himself that I am confident that I'll be admitted to Gan Eden. And the, the, the Bed Din Shalmala will ask me, Elimelech, did you study Torah the way you should have? And I'm going to tell them, no. Then they're going to ask, Elimelech, did you do the mitzvot the way you should have? And I'm going to tell them, no, I didn't. So then they're going to say, Elimelech speaks the truth. And for telling the truth, he deserves Gan Eden. He's an extremely humble individual. But he always kept himself in check. He understood what he needed to do in order to attain the pure Chochmah. But it starts with Yirata with Yirata Hashem and Yirat Ched. It's realizing and having the, the understanding that hey, I may be falling short, and there's always more and more wisdom to seek. But it starts with the Yirat Shamaim and it starts with the Yirat Ched. That was a great Noam Eli Melech. Lo kol alenu us who is you know we reach the ankles of the Noam Eli Melech. How much the Yirat Shamaim and Yirat Ched must play a role in our lives. The Vilna gone along this theme says that a person who is God-fearing, who has Yirat Shamaim, and, and, and wants to study um, Chochmah in order to um, avoid spiritual pitfalls, right? That, uh, then that's the way to do it. A person that wants to avoid the Yetzirah, or he finds himself in troubling situations spiritual, spiritually, then the attaining Chochmah is the way to remedy all that because he's searching something important for him and therefore when he ser- when, when it's something that he cares about when he, dis- when he discovers Chochmah he's going to hold it dear to him because he knows it's going to help him through life and therefore he's going to endure and uh, on the other hand a person that lacks fear of, of Hashem they, this evil, these skeptics they, they, they don't worry about avoiding sin uh, they're not going to attain any wisdom even after repeated study um, so the skeptic, who's a person who lacks Yirat Hashem, even if he were to study all the Chochmah and Musar, and he reads his book, you know, 50 times, cover to cover, nothing will happen to him. In fact, the Rambam in Hilchot Deot, which we quoted last week, instructs individuals who suffer from the maladies of the soul, the, the sickness of the Neshama, what should be the remedy? What is the medicine that they need to seek? They need to seek the spiritual doctors. The spiritual doctors are the words of the Chachamim. By, by the Chachamim teaching and, uh, the, the proper and appropriate wisdom to those who seek it, these doctors, they, they nurse the afflicted souls with, uh, and putting them in the proper path to spiritual health. And, that's, and what pasuk does the Rambam use to substantiate this this idea, this pasuk from from our uh, that we just learned in Mishlei, Chochma Musar Evilim Bazu, because the the skeptics scorn wisdom and they scorn the discipline, because uh, they recognize that they they have faulty characters, they recognize that they're lacking in many areas of life, but they fail to seek the remedy from the spiritual doctors, those of the Chachamim. The Meiri has a, a a beautiful idea on this pasuk. He says that. A person tends to um, degrade something and scorn something when he feels it's unattainable. Uh, uh, For example, the Chachamim say that a person who can't afford to buy meat, he will scorn it by saying that it's uh, it's spoiled. And uh, and that's why the Evil, the skeptic, he scorns the Chochmah Musa. Um, Amongst the many, many people I've encountered in life, the people that tend to be, I don't like to call them, uh, a- anti-religious uh, or the people that consider religion as um, you know d- deficient and uh, low on their totem poles uh, and in their list of priorities most of those ta- most of the time they say things because it's unattainable to them and they just 
it, it's impossible. If we were to attempt to do something, to seek the wisdom, if they had that just little spark of Yirat Shemaim, they can see and they can realize, their eyes will open into many, many things. Uh, and it's an unfortunate reality that sometimes you hear people talk negatively about the Torah and the mitzvot, Jewish people I'm talking about, of course. I'm not talking about anti-Semitic Jews. I'm talking Jewish people that, that speak so harshly about the Torah and the mitzvot. It's unattainable to them. It's impossible. Because they, inside, they don't have the Yirat Hashem. So for them, it's just, they're, they're skeptical. Well, what is this? They just scorn the discipline. They scorn uh, the, the Chokhmah. If an individual was offered an opportunity to be as wise as Shalomo HaMelech, even the greatest fool would accept such an opportunity. Who wouldn't take that opportunity to be as wise as Shlomo HaMelech? But wisdom, the chokhmah that we're dealing with over here, is not something that you go into your, your closet and then like taking out a dress or a suit and putting it on, a perfect fit. That's not how it works. It requires toil. It requires amelut, labor. And, and therefore, uh, it, you know, a huge effort is needed in order to acquire this wisdom. And th that's the problem with the skeptic. The skeptic knows the effort involved and he's not interested. So he holds back and he's unwilling to exert the effort needed to achieve it. So he despairs of ever succeeding in the in that uh, in, in achieving the wisdom and then, then ends up scorning it. That, so, so that's what the Miri says. The Miri actually continues and he says that it's a warning for an individual who wishes to attain the Chokhmah. A person who seeks and dives into the Chokhmah, the Torah, the wisdom of the holy books that we have, not to become frustrated by the effort that's involved um, uh, in, in attaining it, right? A person has to constantly apply himself, you know, over and over and over, day again, day in and day out, in the pursuit of Chokhmah, until he slowly, but yet surely, will attain that Chokhmah. The next Pasuk, which is Pasuk Chet, can be argued as one of the more popular Pesukim in the book of Mishle. You've probably heard it before. Uh, Moroccans tend to hold very uh, dearly this Pasuk because it deals a lot with um, cu uh, customs and keeping of customs, although that's not what we're going to focus on today. But the Pasuk in Pasuk, uh, Shlomo Melech in Pasuk Ched writes, Shema Beni Musar Avicha Ve'al Titosh Torat Imecha. Probably heard that Pasuk. Shema beni Musar avicha, hear my child, the discipline of your father, ve'al titosh torat imecha, and do not forsake the teaching of your mother. So there are some that explain this pasuk quite literally, that the child needs to accept the father's rebuke and the mother's teachings because they're given for the child's benefit. Torat imecha comes from Lashon Hora'a. Hora'a is instruction. Instruction of uh, uh, teaching. This pasuk, which speaks about honoring one's parents, and the previous pasuk, which spoke about fear of God, uh, Yirat Hashem, correspond, says the Vilna Gaon, to the three partners in creating each individual. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and one's uh, father and mother. So in the last pasuk, you have Yirat Hashem, and here you have the obligation to hear the discipline of the father, and don't forsake the teaching uh, of the mother. The first musar, the first discipline that a person must accept is that of his parents. That's the first thing that happens in any in all of our lives. Everyone listening today uh, to this shiur, the first form of musar they ever heard was their parents. Um, they 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 admonish him, they direct him, they put him on the right path um, from from early youth, from a young age, and that musar will will sensitize him in order to, so he'll be willing to accept Musar in other aspects of his life. Uh, Torah, uh, the, the, the parental Musar, parental discipline, is what enables a person to accept Torah discipline. And that's why, a side point, there is a mitzvah, ben sorer moreh. Mitzvah ben sorer moreh is an the wayward and rebellious son. His punishment is mita. His punishment is death. Everyone asks the question, why such a crazy, crazy punishment? Why so strict? Why so severe? Oh, okay, rebelled. Everyone rebels. No, 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 no. The Ben Sorer More, although the Chachamim say it never happened in the history, but the Ben Sorer More is the person that never had the parental guidance. He never had the parental Musar. And he's so wayward that there's no, there's no a solution for him. Eventually, he will go off and, and, and commit the worst, most heinous crimes uh, imaginable. And therefore... 
his punishment is death. But that's for a different time. In this book of Mishle, we will find many, many times that Shlomo HaMelech is warning the reader or warning the child to hear the rebuke of one's parents. Um, and as well as the warning to parents to rebuke uh, their child and chastise their, ch- their child. Because it's extremely vital to, uh, to our children to give proper musar. Because a person's intelligence uh, uh, doesn't really fully develop until, uh, until he becomes a mature adult. Uh, when he's a youth, you know, things are still growing, things are happening, person's not thinking straight, those of you that have small children or grandchildren, you hear them, they're just not thinking rationally, they're not thinking logically, that takes time to develop. But one thing that comes full force, even from a young age, is a yetzara, is the evil inclination. The Basuk says in Sefer Devarim, Ki yetzer lev ha'adam ra mi ne'urav, because the yetzer, the inclination of, of, of man is bad from already from his youth. So due to the immaturity that when a person is young, then that full intelligence to uh, overcome the Yetzirah is not available. So he needs the parents to direct him and show the child what you need to do, what you don't need to do. And that uh, admonition, that reproof, that uh, chastisement of and proper rebuke is what's able to balance or counterbalance the, neg- the negative traits or the negativity that is found in his life, the Yetzer Leva Adam Rami Ne'urav. Um, some of the Mepharshim want to say that the, the paternal, the father instinct here is teaching Musar, Shema Beni Musar Avicha, and the maternal guidance is that of teaching. The Me'iri says that the father's job is to, through the Musar, is to teach the, chuch- the Chokhmah, is to teach wisdom, to study Chokhmah. And the teaching of the mother is that, is the efforts in order to teach the child proper behavior. Um, others want to say that the father is the natural parental role. He's the parent that speaks harshly. He's the parent that speaks strictly. He disciplines his sons and his daughters. And therefore, Shlomo HaMelech says, listen, you child, your job is to listen. Follow the father's musar. It's not a time to have a conversation. The father is admonishing you. He's setting you on the right path. You listen. Shema beni musar avicha. Chachamim so. He's still beni. Although, although that the father is coming down and chastising and rebuking his son, but it's still my son. It can't go to the point Chas uh, Shalom, where where a father doesn't uh, or chastises his son not for the sake of his son, just because if he lets anger take control, then he loses the whole purpose. It has to be within mind that what I'm telling my son right now is because he's my son. Shema Beni, Musar Avicha. But the mothers, the mothers are generally more soft spoken, as we know, and when they admonish, they do it with a request, please do this. You know, maybe it's better if you do that. And usually a conversation ensues, right? So therefore, it's more of a teaching. It's more of a tutelage from the mother. And therefore, don't forsake the teaching of your mother. It doesn't say the musad of your mother. It says, Altitosh Torat Imecha, the teaching of your mother. The, this pasuk really teaches us the two approaches in serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Uh, And each one has to be utilized in the appropriate situation. Sometimes we need to be firm when it comes to our Avodat Hashem. We have to be like, like, a, like a cedar tree. Uh, 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 and that's learned from the trait or the Musar of one's father. Shema Beni Musar Avicha. And other times we have to be soft. We have to be soft like a, like a reed, a trait that a person absorbs and learns from his mother, which is done in more gentle terms. Torati Mecha. Rashi actually has a beautiful interpretation of this pasuk. He says that Avicha here is not re- re- referring to your um, your biological father. Avicha here is in reference to Akados Baruch Hu, your father. The Musad of your father consists of both the Torah Shebichtav and the Torah Shebe'alpeh. The written Torah and the oral Torah that Akados Baruch Hu gave to Moshe. He is Av- Avinu Sheba Shemaim. He's our father in heaven. And the father that gave us the, the, both the Torah Shebikhtab and Torah Shebalpeh. So who's the mother? Imecha, he says, refers to Umatecha. Umatecha means your nation. B'nai Israel. More specifically, is the enactments and the uh, additional gdarim 
and takanot that the Chachamim added to the Torah, or the rabbinical laws that the Chachamim did. That's the Torah Imecha. That's why you will see, I mentioned in the beginning, that Moroccans uh, hold dearly of, I even have a Sidur that writes this on the back of the Sidur, this Pasuk, al Titosh Torah Imecha, because this is in reference to the customs that one has. This is the Pasuk that teaches us not to let go of your customs. And of course, Moroccans feel very, very strongly about their customs, they don't want to let them go. So that's why you'll see many Moroccan Sidurim, books of, of, of Moroccan Minagim, you'll always start with this Pasuk, al Titosh Torat Imecha, because these are the additional innovations or enactments that were that were used in, in the person's uh, birth country. The Vilna Gaon says a slightly different than Rashi. He says, Shema uh, Beni Musar Avicha is in reference to the written Torah only. And the Alti Tosh Torah Timecha, don't forsake the teachings of your mothers in reference to the oral Torah, the Torah Shebel Peh. Because the written Torah is compared to the father's Musar, because that's where we find the general principles of the mitzvot without explanation. This is what you have to do. Right? Sheshit Yamim, Ta'avod, Ubayom Asheri Tishbot. This is the law. Here's the general law. You know, Lo Tilba Sha'adnez. Don't wear sha'anez. Shivat yamim tochelu matzot. Vaya leot ayadecha ototafot benenecha. The Torah just tells us what to do, general principles and instruction. The maternal guidance, which we say is the Torah Shabbat Peh, is more detailed. It's a, it's, it's a, a progress, and therefore you start studying, and there's, there's a lot more branches that stem out from that um, strict discipline that was given from the Father. And that is the function of the Torah Shabbat Peh, the oral Torah, which has all the many, many uh, different uh, aspects of every single mitzvah. And because of this, our Chachamim uh, learned from this Pasuk that whenever you have a minhag between your father and your mother, you have to follow your, you have to follow your father. So your father's minhag takes precedence because that's the one that is more that is more strict, is more solid, and of course is more source. Torah Shebichtav is more from the source than that of the um, of the Torah Shebel Pe. Um, so that that concludes Pasuk Chet. The last Pasuk we're going to learn today is Pasuk Tet, also connected to uh, almost like a continuation of Pasuk Chet. Why do I need to hear the discipline of your father and don't forsake the teaching of your mother? Says Shlomo Melech, Ki liviat chen hem lerosheha va'anakim legargerotecha. Because they are an adornment of grace for your head and they are chains for your neck. What it means over here? So Mabim says that the head symbolizes thought and the neck symbolizes speech. So the musar that a person learns and the teachings that a person receives from his parents will adorn an individual through his thoughts and his speech. All of a sudden, a person's sechel, a person's machshavot, and his dibur become holy. Once a person is able to uh, receive and absorb all the chokhmah and musar from his parents, then all of a sudden he becomes a different individual in the way he thinks and the way he speeches, speak, speaks. He is a more mature individual. Now all of a sudden you can see it. You can you, you, Talking with him, you go, wow, this person is different. He's not talking like, uh, like an imbecile before. Now all of a sudden, you know, he's, he, he's, he's a gentleman. He's, he's ladylike. She's ladylike. This is something that, that, we, that we should appreciate. Mashenken, what it was not before, uh, this person who didn't hear any discipline or uh, from his parents. Unfortunately, you'll always come across people in life, Jews, non-Jews, uh, you know, in, in parts of the world, where you can't help but, ask, but, but, but say to yourself, these individuals, look at the way they talk, look at the way they, they, they dress, look at the way they, they walk around, you know, is it their fault? Probably not. But I'll tell you one thing. It must be that they didn't receive this uh, this Musar Avicha and Torah Timecha. There's no way. Because if they would have had that, it would it would have steered them in a different direction. Unfortunately, the lower class of, of the world are, are those that usually lacked this first step. The first step we said, of course, was Yirat Hashem. And then after that was uh, Musar Avicha and Torah Timecha. And those that that, are, that have find that or, can, or are missing that aspect to their lives are usually individuals that are lost 
in the way. And it's even difficult having a conversation with them because you feel, well, we're not even on the same level. How can I even converse with, 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 the, with these individuals? Says the Vilna Gaon, the symbolism of this Pasuk, he says that in the time of the, of the Gemara, it was customary to make jewelry for one's wife according to her qualities. And a, a head ornament, a crown, was created for a woman who possessed superior intelligence. And a necklace was uh, created or, or fashioned for a woman who had many, many good deeds. Now, the head ornament or the crown was fashioned from one piece because that corresponds to the sechel, the intellect, which is one single entity. The neck ornament was comprised of many pieces because every good deed, every ma'aseh tov, is a separate act. It's a separate mitzvah. And similarly, the Torah and the mitzvot are a person's ornaments. The Torah study is the crown, the ketel al is is what is one piece, it's one ornament. And it's the adornment of grace, Livyatchen, Hemler Oshecha, it's a Livyatchen. And the mitzvot are represented by the Anakim Legargerotecha, the chains around the neck, because it's representative of the body, the body which performs the Ma'asim. I use my hands to shake the Lulav, I use my hand to wrap the Tefillin, and therefore the neck. And the chains go down the body in representation of the mitzvot that is done by the body. But the crown is the Torah, is one piece, because that stems from the sechel and, or, or the mind. Rav Samson Rafao Hirsch points out that the parental teaching, a father's musar and a mother's instruction, began before a child's formal education. From the moment... From the moment the child is born, the father and the mother are already teaching. When he approaches adulthood, once his child approaches adulthood, he can easily think, I don't need my parents anymore. Eh, I can I can answer for myself. I know how to get through things myself. He thinks he's better educated. And God forbid, he can rebel against the demands of his father or that of his mother. So therefore, he's always advised to accept his father's education and his mother's lessons for his whole life. An adult is considered a person of independent judgment whose head, Roshecha, rests on the Gargerotecha, rests on the neck, and uh, because it's one being. But even an adult, even an adult, is obligated to follow his father's teachings, uh, both in the past and in the present. And that should be the precious ornament. That is the crown, That and that is the the necklace around a person's uh, around a person's neck. Finally, tonight, Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi expounds this this pasuk by saying that if a person is walking alone on the road, he should immerse himself in the study of the Torah. Why? Because the study of Torah is considered leviyah, leviyatchen is an accompaniment of grace, as we said. Torah will accompany a person and protect him. And if not only that, if one's head hurts, if one's suffering from a headache. Or one's throat hurts. Allergy season now, right? Got headaches, you got throat itching, right? It's happening right now. Then he should become engrossed in Torah study as well. Because not only is it a Liviat Chen Hem Lerosecha, but it's also an Anakim Legargerotecha. It brings um, it brings refua. The Torah brings refua to all your body parts. The Chachamim say that the word Roshecha, your head in this Pasuk, is likened to the word Rishiotecha. Rishiotecha means also your poverty, which we'll see later on in the sixth parak, explaining that the words of Torah always remain this Liviatchem. They will always remain a keter, a crown, an adornment of grace. Even when a man becomes old and he's no longer able to support himself and he doesn't have a job or and he's just sitting at home, nevertheless, he's going to be assisted by those who respect him for his learning, for the study of Torah that he had in his in his life or throughout his life. And that's what Rav Pinchas ben Chama says in the Gemara, that the, this Pasuk is in reference to the Torah and the Mitzvot. Because the Torah and Mitzvot is what accompany a person wherever he goes and whatever he does. 
It's one of the reasons why a funeral is called a levaya. A levaya means escorting. Not it's, the literal reason why it's called a levaya is because we escort the deceased to their final resting place. We, that's why the mitzvah of levaya is to follow the hearse or to follow the coffin to its final resting place. But not only that, the reason why it's called levaya, it's called a levaya because the mitzvot in the Torah also accompany a person to the next world, to Olam Abba. When he, and not only into the next world, but as he's here, when he moves from place to place, the mitzvot follow, follow him wherever he goes. When he builds a house, there's a mitzvot to build a fence uh, 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 around the roof. When he installs a door, he has to put up a mezuzah. When he buy, when he puts on new clothing, he's, he has to make sure it's not uh, a sha'adnez, so on and so forth uh, uh, as he goes on uh, throughout this world. So not only is an olam haba, everywhere he turns, the mitzvot are following him and accompanying him, and you're supposed to grab on those mitzvot, but of course, in olam haba, when there's no more opportunity to do mitzvot, those are the those are the reward deeds and merit that follow a person into the next world. This is the meaning of Liviat Chen Hem Leroshecha Vanakim Legargerotecha. The adornment of grace on your head and the chains of your neck come as a result of what? Come as a result of three things. A, it must start with Yirat Hashem. It has to be with the fear of God. In order to attain any wisdom of Torah, it must uh, be predicated with Yirat Hashem. Without that, you can't do anything. You can't even begin. I would close this book right now and go away. Don't study this book. You have other things to study. It has to begin with Yirat Shamaim. Once you have Yirat Shamaim, then it's adopting the principles and the teachings and the discipline from your parents throughout life. Not just when you're a child, but even as you grow older, because those teachings and principles will help you attain the wonderful wisdom that we seek. Bezrat Hashem, next week we will continue our study of this sefer with much more parables and proverbs to delight ourselves and, uh, and indulge in. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a wonderful evening.